actually affects millions of people. It's probably affected you, but everything you think is causing your acne might be wrong. Uh. Here's what's happening. When dead skin cells in excess oil build up, they form a plug, clogging the pore and trapping bacteria inside. And voila, you got yourself a pimple. It's a pimple, Phyllis. Avril Lavigne gets them all the time and she rocks harder than anyone alive. Your skin is like a bustling city with millions of tiny residents, which we're gonna call pores. And these pores are home to oil glands, which produce sebum to keep your skin moisturized and healthy. But sometimes things get a little out of control. Most people have struggled with acne. It's not uncommon. 85% of people will suffer from acne. That's about 40 to 50 million Americans that are gonna be affected, making it the most common skin disorder in the US and I am most certainly one of those 40 to 50 million. I get really deep cystic acne and I struggled with it all through middle school and high school. And now that I'm 25, I feel like I'm struggling with it all over again. And it has been incredibly annoying, but it's also made me really curious as to what's happening underneath my skin. And after I started doing some research, I was shocked that everything I had been told was not in fact true. Let's talk about the different types of acne. We've got your typical whiteheads, blackheads, papules, pustulates, and even those gnarly cystic acne monsters, which is what I get. And they can be a real pain, but no worries because science has our back and can explain all of it. The myths of acne. Despite popular belief, diet isn't actually proven to be the cause of acne. I know, it's shocking. Yes, it's important to have a good diet, but it isn't the reason that you have acne. Also, dermatologist Amy Derrick says that stress may not play a role either. And there's not good enough studies out there to prove that stress hormones actually make a difference. And when people are stressed, what do you do? You touch your face, you rest your hand on your jaw, you get sweaty, all leading to clogged pores on your face. And here's the thing, we're an instant gratification society. We want the fix and we want it now, but it takes time and patience to see results. It's a lot like working out, but you will actually be shocked to find out that your acne might have nothing to do with your environment at all. Acne at its core is genetic. <sighs> And we're gonna talk about that a little bit later. Welcome to things I never thought I would be doing uh, for the love of science. So I have my slides, my slide covers, and I have a pimple popping kit to make sure that I don't contaminate our specimen with my hands. Slides are ready. You guys know I love a microscope moment. So we're going to take a look at what it looks like at a tiny level when you pop a pimple. I know, I'm a nerd. First, we need to know what's going on in our skin. Acne typically appears on our face, forehead, chest, upper back, and shoulders because these areas of the skin have the most oil. The sebaceous glands are an organ in your skin that make and secrete sebum. Sebum is a natural lubricant that protects your skin from things that rub up against your skin and can cause damage. Also, it helps with moisture loss and brittle hairs. Infection caused by bacteria or fungus in the hair follicles are connected to those oil glands, and the follicle wall may bulge and produce a whitehead. Or the bulge may be open to the surface and darken, causing a blackhead. And a blackhead may look like dirt stuck in pores, but it's actually the pore that's congested with bacteria and oil, which turns brown when it's exposed to air. Pimples are raised white spots with white centers that develop when blocked hair follicles become inflamed or infected with bacteria. And those blockages and inflammation deep inside the hair follicle produce cysts like lumps underneath the surface of our skin. There are other pores in your skin, which are the openings of the sweat glands, and they aren't usually involved in acne. Look at these pores, they're gaping. No, 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 no. I was not expecting to find moving bacteria. That makes me never wanna to touch my face ever again seeing this thing. I need to look at the one on my cheek now. So this one had a little blood that came with it, so it's kinda of cool, you can like see my red blood cells. A bunch of dead skin cells is like all I'm seeing in this one. I'm interested to see what this one's going to look like under the microscope. It's kind of moving and I don't like it. At least this one, the bacteria isn't like freaking out like the past couple ones. You can see it almost like oozing out on that right side, like the oils. Well, that's what it looks like up close and personal, but how do I prevent the bacteria from even building up on my face in the first place? Cause I get it, bacteria is gonna be there, but I don't want it to be there all the time and know that when I'm popping pimples, I could be spreading that bacteria, you know? Now that we're disgusted by the organisms living on your face, 
There isn't actually a specific acne gene. However, genetics does play a role in whether you're prone to acne. Acne is far more genetic than environmental, which feels like the opposite of everything I have ever been taught. But acne genetics determines how your immune system actually responds to P. acne's bacteria one of the root causes of acne and probably what we saw on our slide. One person may develop only minor blackheads while another develops red and inflamed cystic breakouts. Hi, me. It's me. Genetics also only plays a role in how easily your pores clog. Of course, diet, environmental factors, personal hygiene habits, and hormones also influence acne, but the bottom line is your acne genetics may be the underlying reason for your breakouts and the type of acne that you have. So for example, you may have inherited the tendency to overproduce dead skin cells and then shed them in a way that clogs your pores. This leads to breakouts happening. You can basically think of that as genetic acne. Now there's a ton of hokey facial care information out there. David, <gasps> we have guests. You were supposed to have cleaned up all these quality products. I know, I just didn't want to put such high quality paraben and PABA free product on the floor. Which is why it is best to consult your dermatologist if you need skincare help. But in my time of taking my skincare into my own hands, I found that getting a hydrofacial once a quarter really helps clear out my acne and keep my pores open, alongside using non-clogenic products that won't clog your pores and cause additional breakouts. Also, keep an eye out for salicylic acid, benzoyl peroxide, glycolic acid, and sulfur as well. Those are the fabulous four when it comes to acne fighting ingredients. They're lightly exfoliating, unclogged pores, and treat and prevent breakouts. Many people will discontinue treatment if they don't see immediate results. However, depending on your treatment type, it can take a couple weeks to see substantial progress. Oh, the other thing I've learned, life happens. Don't be embarrassed about having acne. I literally just picked and popped in, put my acne on display on YouTube. You have nothing to be embarrassed about.